Hey there, everybody. Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now, if you've been watching my channel, both here on Outer Limitless 2 or on my primary Outer Limitless channel, over the past couple of years, you've seen me really taking a deep dive into night vision products, whether binoculars, monoculars, or scope-driven units. Night vision is absolutely an emerging technology for the consumer market. At this point, there's a ton of great competition out there, and it's really hard to tell what are high quality products and really perform and what might be basically cheap toys, a little bit gimmicky and really leave you lacking. And today we're going to look at another product from the company Hojo Kojo, who I have covered in the past. Now their products to this point have performed very well and this is one of their newest products to date. So unlike my other binocular setups, these binoculars actually become head mounted. So they're daytime, nighttime capable, but head mounted. And so today we're gonna take a look at these for viability. Does the head mount gain me anything? Does the quality of this unit compare to other units? How do these perform? Are these even something worth considering? But the only way to figure that out is to get into this. And so with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Hojo Kojo who did provide these for review. And so as you heard me say in the introduction, night vision technology as a fairly recent emerging technology for the consumer market, it's really been booming. I have tons and tons and tons of companies that come to me and ask me to test their products. And I've really been surprised at what I look at online and how it appears and what the specs seem to be compared to other units. Well, I get them in my hands, sometimes they're amazing. They blow me away. I just am absolutely shocked at the performance. And other times it's been maybe a little bit lackluster. So I'm really curious today to figure this out. And the only way to truly tell what the quality is going to be is when you get these into practical field use. And so I've been put to the task, Hojo Kojo asking me not just to test these, but to test them while wearing them and trying to navigate around. They're doing their own research. They're trying to figure out what works and to improve their own products. And I appreciate that very much about the brand. So again, this is one of their newest products. Let's flip the camera around and we'll start to get into this. And so with the night vision products, there is one theme that carries through from beginning to end, and that's the difference between the recorded footage on the unit and the actual user's experience. Keep in mind, when you get these out into the field, you are actually looking through a little bit of a screen, and then you can hit record and record footage. So what you see in this video is the recorded footage, but that is not necessarily entirely indicative of my actual user's experience. And so as we get this open, let's see what other things are in common. So generally speaking with these units, they do typically come in some sort of a case. So that is absolutely what we have here, a fairly compact unit. Now, what I can tell you already is this is going to fall into a mid-sized or smaller tier unit. Uh, oftentimes these units can be fairly large in size, greater than what your typical binoculars would be. And in this particular case, you can see it is fairly compact at roughly six or seven inches by four or five inches and eh, maybe about four inches tall. So fairly compact, all things considered. Nicely packaged up everything in here that I'm going to need. And the main unit here, again, being fairly small. This is on the smaller side of what I typically test. So compact, that's nice. But at the same time, it makes me just wonder, you know, how good is the overall quality going to be? Has smaller lenses, smaller, you know, electronics inside, a smaller screen. So the user's experience will definitely dictate in the overall quality of the picture and the capability of that nighttime infrared technology. Here we have a standard strap. So not a head strap, but the standard shoulder strap. 
And then here is the head mount. So it looks to be almost in essence, kind of like a GoPro style mount. And then this is going to be your full head strap. So that's cool. So this will definitely be an integral part of the test. Looks like an adapter of sorts. We'll figure this out. A USB type C charging cable, a cleaning cloth, and the user's manual, which I find a lot of times is worth just taking a little dive into them. Uh, you know, being a dude, I usually, you know, we'll skip user's manuals, but from time to time, they do come into play. And with each one of these units, in my experience, they do differ just a little bit. There's a lot of similarities and a lot of things that are fairly straightforward, but at the same time, sometimes worth taking a quick look. And the first thing I'm seeing as I rotate this all the way around, I don't necessarily see any battery compartments. And to me, that's a good thing because this should be an integral battery with a USB type C charging port, which is cool. And inside I can already see that this has a memory card installed which is a 32 gigabyte card. So again, remember, part of what the key for me is the ability to actually record images and video directly off of the unit and get the advantage of one of these units. Now, what can these be used for? Certainly, uh, just you know, general outdoor activities, using them like binoculars, zooming in, seeing things closer up. But I mean, that's the obvious thing nature, all that stuff, but surveillance. Remember, these are a head mounted unit. I'm really curious, like what do you gain by mounting these on your head? And we're gonna have to figure that out. And so typically a long press here of the power button is going to turn on the unit. As I kick this on here, it does come on and you can see these do kick in right away. I have my focus knob here and yes, the ability to now focus down onto the surface, which is nice. And let's see how infinite this focus is. I find that in order for these to come into focus, you do need to be roughly about maybe 16 inches away from the subject, which is not too bad. And it does give me the ability to focus down onto something that is fairly close in the foreground. Here, the menu button as I go through the menu. Nice menu on the inside, looks pretty good. Looks like it's gonna be fairly easy to navigate. I can read everything clearly and it is well laid out and organized. Up and down buttons here are gonna help me navigate. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna change all the resolution, make sure this is set up so that when I record, I have everything set up the way I need. And this should also record audio. So we're gonna be testing the audio quality of this throughout this video. And so at this point, I do have this ready to go. You can see this is in the video mode. I have the video set to 1080p and you can see it has about three hours and 33 minutes of record time. And then I also set the photo mode to two megapixels. I got my date stamp and everything squared away. So these are now ready for field use. Again, everything here, fairly straightforward. Now keep in mind when I get these outside, I will be navigating through these buttons. This also does have a screen brightness, which I might need to adjust. That is the very last thing in the menu. So I might find that I need to bounce between the screen brightness and then here, the infrared mode. So basically in essence, if I long press, this seems like it's going to be a digital zoom. So long pressing here, that's going to be a digital zoom forward and back, so zooming in, zooming out. And then in terms of kicking on the infrared mode, well, let's see if I, yep, single press is going to do it. So a single press gets me through the different infrared modes up and down. And from what I can tell, this does seem to have two, three, four, five, six, seven brightness adjustments. So seven infrared sensitivity levels. This here is your infrared emitter. This here is your objective lens and then your focus. And other than that, the screen in the back here, this is about 2.7 inches in overall length diagonally. Now, just one last thing worth noting, and it's probably not a big deal. This has an IP54 water resistance rating. So if you get caught outside, you should be good in basic showers and reasonably light rains. 
Now to work through the setup, the first thing is, well, what can we do here? So I'm gonna loosen this. And these do appear to essentially go right on this mount. And I can get this adjusted to various different lengths, which should set the distance off of my face. So I'm gonna start with these as far off as possible. So all the way out. And then it comes with a little thumb screw. This threads very easily down and into place. And so it makes me think that this particular adapter here would be used for another type of helmet mount, which to be perfectly straightforward, I'm just not that familiar. So it doesn't seem like this is needed for this particular setup. Now at this point, what does this look like? And so the first thing will be adjusting this to fit the size of my head. It's nice that this is just a simple Velcro enclosure, and this is gonna definitely need to be fairly tight. I can tell you already that because of the weight of the unit, you're gonna to need to run this just a little bit tight. Now the Velcro seemingly sound should be enough of it here for appropriate adjustment, but we will figure that out. And so now with everything kind of cranked down, it definitely can go tighter than you need, but that gives me the opportunity now just to loosen up a touch and actually feels pretty good being just a little bit on the tight side because these are now nice and firm. Not gonna pop off too much. I might need to make just a subtle adjustment here, but yep, yeah, that seems better. And so, yeah, I should be able to move around fairly easy, no problem, and not really have these falling off of my face. Now you will notice that these are magnetized. I like that. I like the fact that if these are going to stay up, they're actually magnetized right into place. And so now, well, if I get these on my face, so zoom wise, let's see. All right. So I can get these kind of squared away. Now, of course, they're not one to one. So I'm going to have to be trusting my peripheral vision just a little bit as I walk around to be able to see out in front of me, but then also off into the distance. So that's kind of going to be something that's interesting that I need to get used to. Now, in terms of my access to the buttons, everything is accessible outside of the mount, which is a big deal. And I can get on my Infrared intensities, very easy, no problem. Clicking those up and down. I can get on the focus because keep in mind, again, this is manual focus. So I do need to just sit here and get that dialed in. But now let's see, let's hit record. The bottom button closest to me on the right hand side. So as long as I index properly, now that I've hit record and you can see here, kind of taking a look at my patch wall. Now the footage is subject to my moving around and as you can see I can easily get on the focus ring here and dial this in and out so that's kind of interesting and I can actually generally see my surroundings in front of me. So that's kind of nice where I can look out of my peripheral vision and still see. So if I had a flashlight and I was walking around at nighttime, which then that kind of defeats the purpose if you're trying to be stealth but at the same time this should kind of work. And especially, huh, this should be interesting. So we'll see how this goes. So yeah, with that, I guess at this point, let's get out into the field and give these a try. I'm curious how this will go. All right, so now with the Hojo Kojo night vision binoculars on my head, now it's gonna be a little loud. There is some vehicle noise but I did want to leverage only the audio from this device. And actually you can start to see if I can get this a little dialed in. I am fairly close to a road. However, at the same time, I'm on a river and I know there's beaver activity out here. I've heard them already slapping around. Now, as we get into the night vision mode, I'm going to try to do all of this in the pitch black. And already I'm like zooming around. You can see here through the trees. There you go. So let's try to get into the night vision modes now. All right, right away, clicking on, this is the first mode. And this is actually 
really cool now this is not going to be nearly as good as a tripod mount however already very effective I can see very clearly and I'm actually going to increase intensity so this says level 3 I think uh, I can't say exactly All right, so this is like level 4 and the beavers that I was listening to we're like out in this area. Now as I pan around you can see a perfect mirror image. I'm curious how the audio is going to sound here. It always varies from unit to unit. But so far actually pretty good. And as I long press, this is going to be the digital zoom. And I can zoom in. This is 3.4 times. And I'll try to go all the way in. So this is eight times digital zoom. Not too bad. And my head is almost effectively like a tripod. You can see that is my breath. Now if I can increase the intensity oh, all the way off. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see the theoretical limit here. So as I come back, zoom this back to a reasonable distance. And that's fully zoomed all the way out. Maybe a little bit bright considering how close I am. But that picture is not bad. And down into the water, perfect mirror image. And the focus is easy to get on, which is nice. That beaver was right over there for sure. Nice clear picture, way off in the distance. Now looking off in a slightly different direction. Again, this is on intensity seven. So if you think that's a little too much, you can certainly dial it down. Again here, let's see, so that's off. Intensity level one. Not bad, even at that distance. Two. Two is probably ideal. Again, you can see my breath. It's my breath. That's intensity three. Some nice white birch over there. Beautiful mirror image tonight. That's really cool. These are very good. I can say I like the picture. And being on my head, it's nice and sturdy. This definitely helps a lot. And I'd say better than the tripod. I don't know if it looks better to you. But it's better for me. Intensity 4. I mean, if there was something over there, I'd see it. Let's zoom in. Digital zoom makes it darker, but if I zoom back out, that's much better. That's perfect. There's definitely stuff around here. I can hear it. And so now as I get the NV8160 out in the field during the daytime. Now this is the exact same location where I was at nighttime. And you can see here the picture on the recorded footage. Now keep in mind there is a fundamental difference between the recorded footage and my user's experience. As I have these on my head and in front of my face it is 
different, and in this case, I would say vastly different, than the recorded footage itself. So as you take a look at the recorded footage, it looks contrasty. There's some ghosting. You know, all the white is really bright. This seems oversaturated. So the recorded footage is not great, but the user's experience was fine. It was actually quality. Now, I do have to say, I'm not a huge fan of digital zoom. And if there is one drawback to this particular unit, it's the fact that it does not have optical zoom. It's not using glass. It's not using the lenses to actually perform the zooming. Rather, it's interpolating the pixels as it zooms into the scenery, leveraging that digital zoom. So as you get further and further out, it does get grainy, even when you're looking through the viewfinder. Now, it's not nearly as bad in the viewfinder as it is on screen here with the recorded footage. That is one thing that I would definitely say. And you can see I attempted to track some birds. It's really the only wildlife I saw out here. It's too bad. I was really hoping I would have seen those beavers last night. But at the same time, pretty cool overall. So from a user's experience perspective, definitely cool. The recorded footage does definitely leave something to be desired. But overall, I do have to say I do like these units. And I think that Hojo Kojo's on the right track with the NV8160. All right. So next, the people at Hojo Kojo wanted me to actually wear these and test walking around with them. So as I get these mounted on my head, this is going to be a really interesting test, a little bit different from anything I've ever done. Now, I was originally going to do this literally out at the river and thought, oh, maybe that's not the best idea. So plan B, I'm going to do it here at home. So as I get these literally on my face, I'm pressing record. So now these are recording. And as I get into the different infrared modes, I'm going to press up here. I'm going to have to zoom everything back and you know, make sure everything's dialed in the way I need it with the focus. But at this point, here we go. So this test is going to be a little bit weird. Let's try it out. There's literally no way from what I can tell that I can safely and effectively walk with these on. The ground is right here in front of me, but I have no depth perception, and I'm looking way off in the distance, like 90 feet away, and that's probably 80 feet. So there's a lot between me and where that is. So theoretically, I would have to look out of the peripheral vision down in front of me to even be able to walk. So if I had a flashlight with me, I could probably look in my peripheral vision and actually see, but there's literally no way I could actually walk through my yard even. So this to me is not a viable option. I'd say no go wearing these to navigate around. And so, all right, guys, back in the studio after taking a field use look at the NV8160. Now, I do have to say at this point, this is one of my most enjoyable user experiences. I really did like the fact that I could put these on my head, flip them down, look through these with ease, and then when I needed to get them out of the way, just flip them back up. It's actually very convenient, and the fact of the matter is your body actually does a real good job in general with shock and so the user's experience was fantastic now there were some fundamental drawbacks as you saw the footage is not great but again that's not fully indicative of the user experience when I'm looking through the actual screen looking through the lens looking at my surroundings that is different than what you're seeing from the footage the footage can be grainy. The footage can be saturated. That's just the recorded image and not necessarily what you see on the screen. So I do have to say, I feel as though overall, 
the view on the screen is definitely better than what it looks like after I record it and in the video itself. So generally speaking, really, really cool. Now I do wanna also say, I greatly like this form factor. If you look at the mini little version, the Hojo Kojo binoculars we looked at in the past, well, you can see it is a step up. However, it's actually smaller than a lot of other units that I do look at and test. I've tested a ton of these at this point. They're all a little bit different. So this is kind of the second to smallest that I've tested to date next to Hojo Kojo's mini version. And performance, pretty good. So I feel very happy about the performance with these. And I know it's a step in the right direction. You gotta keep in mind, consumer grade night vision, binoculars, monoculars, and technology is still emerging. Prices are coming down. It's becoming more readily available and affordable to the general consumer. So this is just indicative of what's to come. So with that, I am very, I would say hopeful that as these continue to improve, integrating the optical zoom, not just the digital, and some of the enhancements, it will go a long way. And last but not least, the audio quality a little bit lacking. I think other units have done a better job. Now, the audio is never great in these binocular or monocular setups anyway, but I think they could do a better job. And at least for me, it is fairly important. I personally am dictating to the camera. I'm trying to leverage it for my videos. And if you're somebody that's using this for surveillance or you need sound and you need some level of, I don't know, whether it's security, surveillance, or even just trying to enjoy the outdoors and nature, you want to hear the sounds, you want to hear it clearly. So a little more gain, a little bit brighter, a little bit better quality audio, in my opinion, would go a long way. But again, all in all, a really cool user's experience. So again, thank you very much to the people at Hojo Kojo for providing these for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more of my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, flashlights, backpacks, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.